how to sort of define, define. a pay for a certain a role or a certain job it is pretty much driven basis what kind of role what kind of job we are talking about what are the skills which are in, involved in driving that role what is the geographical span of the role and what kind of impact this role is bringing at an organization level so these are the parameters basis which we evaluate we assess each and every role and then the pay range is defined and which is basically a pay range which is focusing on the fixed remuneration part rest two things the variable component which is a reflection of pay for performance stays in line with the business objective and business guidance and typically your benefit component or benefit and wellness component is consistent across organization because organizations want to create a wholesome experience for all employees regardless of level regardless of role which they are performing so that's how the overall salary structure look like and specifically if you talk about if you specifically talking about the kind of pay we should be operating for a certain role and when we we talk about this we are pretty much talking about the fixed pay and it is majorly driven basis the role and responsibility or job description that role specific consists. role consist wow amazing among i can vouch that so much maths actually involved in the back end and you are doing so much calculations depending upon the business parameter depending upon the budget range as well as the skill set uh, and market demand so now uh, when suppose you are going to hire a person will you communicate the range of that particular uh, uh, role with a job applicant or it is kept hidden so it's it's, it's typically a representation of how the organization construct is it will vary basis the focus an organization is operating at so i will be i'll be very happy to share few of the instances i think more mature markets such as europe us in people who must be reading uh, latest news out there must also be aware that many of such countries have already decided to stop asking the previous pay because everybody is trying to move towards a pay philosophy which is based on the role individual is performing so in india as well and this is what i have also observed and and this is being sort of happening across industry some of the organizations are very uh, liberal the upfront share the comprehend for certain role and the organization slightly conservative in their approach and generation would be because of multiple reason because there is nothing right and wrong here but because certain parameters and creating an internal parity and harmony about the compensation structure they typically don't share but it's a combination of both you will find both kind of organizations present in market who will give you the complete sense on about it so when you say open about close about it or you not sharing the range up front these are the organization they are inclined to pay higher also at times to retain or attract the better talent so it's a combination of both if you create a pay transparency you also have to maintain a high pay for performance levers in place to make sure that your top talent also retain and attract for a role which they are performing at your organization so it's a combination of both but typically uh, i think in in natural perspective whenever you are reaching out to a consultant and you have expectation in mind there is no harm in vetting those expectation with the the consultant partner they will definitely advise you in the right sense good thank you so much hemang now let's discuss on the other side of the table suppose if you are a job applicant and you are applying for a role now sometimes what happen any recruiter actually calls beforehand that what time, what what is your current salary and what is your expectation so what are the ways we should keep in mind uh, before quoting any number should he state uh, state away up front as 30% high 40% high or we have to do some calculations internally and then communicate to the recruiter okay yeah. so so i think this this is one thing which has been transforming in the industry in last few decades if you see definitely we have moved away from an approach where everybody used to ask your previous comp and there was a substantial comp increase which you used to get on your previous comp 
I think more or less everybody is moving to an environment where they have started paying for the role or paying for the position an individual is landing at. And if you talk about pay for po- role or pay for the position, typically in that sense, expectation from a from a candidate perspective is a very important aspect. Through that, you can validate whether this role is sufficing your requirement on remuneration side or not. But eventually, if organizations want to keep their pay parity intact, they have to go by the respective comp range. So what I feel, and, and this is my personal experience, I'm not uh, quoting any organizations here, but what I feel is that if you are going ahead with an industry standard or the pay for role kind of a standard, this gives you a major sort of bandwidth to get the right comp for the right role. So so I'll, I'll tell you an example. I've seen people getting almost 100% hike and people getting 10% hike on a job chain because the role which they are going to land in is having certain comp range associated with it. So if you tie yourself with a certain expectation, it's always good to get a clarification about this with the recruiting partner rather than being uh, being demotivated or not happy about the outcome later on stage once you once offer is landing in your inbox it's better to get that clarification earlier on but parallelly i would also suggest because most of the organization in this uh, this environment where indian job market has been sort of stabilizing as in a big talent pool available on 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 certain level and and niche skill sets are also growing at a year on year progression of double digit comp increases it's very important to keep that flexibility open you can always ask the right questions and get a sense whether the comp range which which is being applied to a certain role is is competitive for you is sufficing what your compensation objectives are but i think eventually you will be landing in a situation where the role is driving the compensation rather than individual you can go 10-15% being outlier on top of whatever range you are operating at but after a point if you even sort of try to negotiate eventually this hampers your future year on your comp progression if you land in that organization because you will be always an outlier in the comp range perspective. So it's very important to make sure that you are more inclined to the role which you are performing and what is the market range for those roles. And see, we always have various other channels to enhance our skill and identify a job which is better paying rather than getting a job which is which is comparatively not that competitive in comp aspect and later on stucking yourself in next couple of years at the same similar kind of comp range because you are already an outlier. Great. Thank you so much, Hema. Uh, let's divide our conversation now in uh, two different parts. First is for the fresher and second one is for the experienced one. Okay. So now let's start about the fresher part. So when you are hiring a fresher in the organization, is the salary compensation flexible or it is 100% fixed? If suppose uh, you are going to hire in bulk, let's take example, suppose uh, 40 to 50, uh, you can say freshers especially for the analyst role or senior analyst role do they hope especially in terms of negotiating their salary in the conversation it is straight away up and it is fixed see as i as i mentioned earlier i think it's more on the organization's philosophy how they want to develop their leadership pipeline by hiring right set of right, right set of campus population so it is basically driven basis that what is the starting comp at a certain role at a certain organization. So typically there is lim- zero to no possibility of negotiating for freshers because eventually from company's point of view as well, these are the population who are going to learn the job first and have more focused training on the job to drive and perform the role which they have been hired for rather than they right away start contributing in a in a broad manner so i think it's typically quite stringent practice across organization when they are hiring campuses because they want to create a job parity pay parity as well because they are not limiting to hire fresher from a certain channel they are going to campuses they are having 
open uh, application forums as well so so it's become very important from pay parity perspective that the fixed remuneration is going to be consistent across the board but eventually if you perform you always have a pay for performance lever through which you can grow on compensation aspect i think from lateral point of view there is a higher possibility to negotiate on compensation because every role every skill set has a different complexity different concept because basis which the con- uh, the construct of the comp range is derived so you have broad flexibility there in comparison to freshers great and uh, for the experience one let's take example suppose if the current pay package is low okay as per the market rate so what percentage so one person actually keep in mind to negotiate with the recruiter uh can you come back on the question please there was a break suppose yeah. uh let's take about the other case that is the experience one okay yeah. and most of the experience one actually having a problem that their current package is low as compared to the available market rate okay now how much percentage increase they should demand from the recruiter is it just uh, as per the common uh, market trend of 30 to 4, 20 to 30 percent recent market height uh, when you are switching a job or you can directly negotiate with the real range applicable for the future role so to, to be honest as i as i stated earlier i think it's very difficult for an individual applicant to know what kind of comp range or what kind of organization philosophy around pay the individual is applying for it's always the right way to approach this is always requesting pay basis the role and you can always see industry references your your peer group where in in that sense to get a sense and what industry benchmarks are but typically see if you look at india job market and there will be i think many people who are driving recruitment for certain organization the india talent pool is vast there are organization who are focusing to hire people from pedigree background one in their respective fields and they are ready to pay premium price for those the same happens when when individuals are targeting to hire from best of the best business schools or best of the best engineering colleges then the premium price the organization is ready to pay for those roles is significantly higher but because indian talent and of multiple sources multiple channels it 100% depends on the organization philosophy about how they want to address the pay for a certain role so it's always advised if you have a candid conversation with your recruiter with the person whom you or or the hr person whom you are sort of talking to they can give you a more real time sense on what is the comp possibility or range available or applicable for that role so even if you feel that you are paying lower lower than somebody else there is a high possibility that you versus the other person are performing different set of roles so that understanding about role typically is not that transparent and at times you feel that we were in the same college we were in the same company now he is paid at certain amount and i am not this could be resultant of different role or responsibility individuals are performing at so my advice would be that it's always great to get more clarity in advance and try to address this issue through through recruiting partner rather than rather than being stringent about certain compensation parameter basis a limited information pool you have at your end it's always because an organization is not going to define their pay philosophy or pay for a role basis a stand alone small sample group they will do it on a broader p- platform where they are not just looking at their competitor they are also looking at the talent landscape of india so in that sense it's very important to understand the first piece which is how the organization is addressing their their, their pay philosophy and where exactly what will be the what will be the situation where which will be a win win situation both for the candidate and organization because otherwise you will have the first round of conversation and eventually there will be no call back to you and you will be figuring out what happened wrong or what went wrong my role 
my skills were pretty much matching to the role so it's so my advice is I was always having the candid conversation okay good let's discuss one more aspect here among suppose if the recruiter is very rigid and they don't want to offer higher salary okay then in that case where we should have a forward discussion should we consider the discussion on the cash component or on the non cash component just like the benefits which you have mentioned about that see uh, if to be honest if if a recruiter is stringent they are also adhering to a certain guidelines in place and and beyond that guidelines they eventually can't take a decision because that's how the the entire construct of the organization is defined at so and and as i told you earlier benefits are not generally level specific or a or a role specific they are very generic in nature and provide extensive support across the organization so getting an advantage on benefit i don't think that kind of flexibility we have in indian job market yet so we should always focus on the fixed component piece and to be honest see at the end of the day it's always good to have a candid conversation and you figure out that this role is the maximum pay limit for this role is this much then you have to accept that fact either take that role or let it go because if you assume that this has to be higher and you are not getting that package and you still joins the organization i'm not sure how motivated you will be but it's always good to have a clarity in terms of deriving this rather than having a experience which is not uh, that positive later on so to be honest i think from from negotiation perspective i don't think benefit have much of flexibility i think the only thing which has flexibility is your your fixed remuneration or your front end salary which is defined as the as per the offer letter only there you have flexibility to negotiate and and get what what fits your sort of need but but yeah i think in benefit perspective it, it's not that much possible and uh, do it good thank you so much hemang uh, i would like to ask one out of context question from you hemang uh, whenever any recruiter releases the offer letter they mention that the compensation part is strictly confidential right now when you are about to join any other organization then hr will ask the compensation or salary slips of the previous employer if they declare themselves that my compensation package is strictly confidential then why they ask the salary slip of previous employer <laughs> then a confidentiality agreement will not breach <laughs> i totally i totally agree and this is quite funny as well so and and you will see that all uh, i think major organization has moved away because this is a confidential information which is the owner of that information is the previous organization so ethically this should not be happening and these kind of information sharing should not be happening and if you see majority of organization have started moving away from that kind of a practice in place and even even i feel that since we are focusing to pay for role pay for the job it hardly matter what was your last drawn salary because eventually what you are going to do or what how you are going to contribute to an organization is pure play is this is any way losing the the impact the or whatever your previous last rank salary is and i think as an organization as an as an ethical practice i think the focus should always be to pay for role uh, rather than getting more detail about what what the previous comp structure looks like the great i mang thank you so much for sharing your perspective now one of the basic query which i have received from almost every uh, you can say fresher and working professional in fact this is a very common question from the mid management professionals also that when we are about to negotiate our salary from a recruiter should we negotiate on the ctc part that is cost to the company or we should negotiate on the in hand salary so what do you recommend for so you can always negotiate on the total reward concept and I, as i told you the benefit the flexibility is lower but if you can have so so you always have an option as such as joining bonus or deferred comp plan in place through which you can make sure that your comp perspective your job is is engaging so you so you have that flexibility available so it should be always around the total ctc bit 
but 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 also i think you should be clear that the benefit flexibility will be very limited in all senses but when you negotiate for total reward i think the recruiting partner can always guide you and advise you what is the flexible option in the place from organization standpoint so those aspect you can leverage more on versus the general uh, overall total reward or total ctc or pick ctc aspect because see every organization will have a different practice it's always great to gauge more details from your recruiting partner and then accordingly prioritize what what will best suit to you okay can you recommend any authentic website or blog where it's, uh, at least uh, one can get the idea or clarity about the range of a particular role and so that they could be uh, they should prepare themselves before going for a salary uh, negotiation with the hr <laughs> yeah this is this is a this is a funny sort of question to be honest i think th- uh, to be honest all those information which are available on web are not validated information so this may take you to a wrong direction or some mis- misassumption could be made in this such kind of a scenario so my recommendation is if you will have more candid conversation with your recruiting partner you will have more sense rather than looking at those website there could be certain people so, so see every case every human who is working in the corporate world has their case as a unique case so you can't compare those unique cases against your career journey so so, so there would be people who are way below on pay in comparison to the market medians for those roles and there will be people who are highly uh, paid on the upper quartile so so i think comparing yourself against someone uh, is not something which i would recommend what i will recommend definitely is you should always focus and try to gauge more understanding about the role which you are applying for and what are the comp ranges the recruiter may be able to advise you for with and eventually i think see if you want to grow on on comp pro- progression perspective all the organization have job job mobility or you can change your role identify a role which 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 ma- meets with your passion and also engage you on compensation perspective rather than trying to get up on a certain role which which could be lowly played in in, in market uh, comparative perspective so so i don't suggest any website i think it's all depends on the role and organization philosophy there could be anecdotal information available on on internet but that that's not trust, uh, trustable in my my recommendation sense okay and suppose if you apply via job referral or through apply via consultant so where someone will get the more salary or it is the same for both uh, both the parties yeah it's 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 going to be same see the organization philosophy about the pay would not change basis the the channel you have applied through it's 100% dependent on the role which they want to hire for see no 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 organization want to do a wrong hiring for a certain role everybody wants to hire somebody who will be able to add value to that kind of a role and responsibility so in that sense it's very important that uh, that you maintain that consistency and pay parity across so my my sense of uh, belief is that there is no variation which channel you apply from i think it all depends on the role or position which you have applied for basically okay uh, himang i will ask two more questions and i will open the stage for the audience so that they can directly interact with you my second last question is most of the people actually complain that uh, when we negotiate our salary with the recruiter sometimes they agree uh, to offer our uh, you can say the targeted amount yeah. which they have uh, some figure in their mind now what happens here is that when they complete one year in the next year they used to do the market correction so next year suppose they are getting uh, you can say a hike of just 5% or 7% something like that this also create dissatisfaction so in this that case uh, uh, it should be uh, you can say revised again when they are about to leave the company or something else see so what i believe is that when you apply for a role or land in an organization the indian job market is also very competitive even the market dynamics are very very uh, what you say very volatile every skill where which is which is niche in nature or roles which are becoming a hot skill 
have higher comp ranges. So even from market progression perspective, the competitiveness of the role or position or skill set defines or redefines the comp range every year. So it's it's not always from organization point of view a mistake that, that you have landed to a lower number and that's why they have given you a mid-year correction. At times because the industry has also gone up significantly higher for those roles. So you have to match the industry standard and you are providing those corrections. So it's, it's majorly a combination of both these aspects. So if this kind of things are happening from an organization perspective, I think it's a right sign because organization is not only acknowledging your performance, but they are also acknowledging the kind of value your skill set is bringing at that overall job hierarchy perspective. So, 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 it, so it should not be misunderstood as the fact that this is happening just because you were hired on a wrong comp. It could be a combination of industry dynamics as well. Okay, great. And any final tips you want to suggest with the, uh, with the audience so that they can definitely implement before getting into the salary negotiation table? I think one of the key things which, which I try to sort of emphasize throughout this conversation is you should always focus on what kind of role, what kind of job you are going to perform in the organization and have a candid conversation with the recruiter to get a true sense on comp ranges. Because at times there will be certain organization where the comp fitment from your standard is not appropriate. Earlier you will have that conversation, better it will be for you because it will not just save your time but the organization time as well. And you will be driven to an organization which can pay you higher if the expectation is that. So it's always good to have the candid conversation uh, at the earlier basis. Great. Thank you so much, Iman, for answering all of my questions. Uh, uh, yeah. the, and I'm and, and I'm going also getting a good feedback from the various audiences through DM that they really enjoy your session. So now I would like to invite a couple of people so that they can directly interact with you or ask their question. So let me picking up one by one. So uh, uh, and Shuman, you can admit and ask your question, followed by Jalpa. Yeah. Sure, sure. Thank, thanks, Priyank. Uh, thanks, Priyank, for also inviting such fantastic speakers. And Himang, excellent session. This is a very, I was thinking that, you know, what will somebody talk about this topic? There's nothing to talk about. But for the last half an hour, uh, I have been spellbound by how you have dissected the whole topic. So really good depth of knowledge. Um, so I have one small question. Uh, I also do some mid-career coaching and, you know, people who come to me for coaching and sometimes during the job search process, I always advise them to ask the recruiter or the hiring, you know, person from the organization for what is the budget of the role. And some companies actually find this question offensive, but I find that, you know, if the budget is completely out of range, why are you bothering? Either way, you know, so if it is too low or too high. So do you think this is... Uh, and I've, I've had some experience overseas, so it is quite common overseas. But do you think this practice is not as common in India for candidates to ask for the budget of the role and then proceed with the conversation? And I'll give, a, to simplify, I'll give an example. Suppose, you know, the role is 25 lakhs per year um, or somebody is at 25 lakhs per year, the role being asked for is at 20 lakhs. Then why should it? somebody even have that conversation or if it is at 75 lakhs then again maybe it will not go through any views on this uh, Himang since you are quite deep into this topic and have experience around this yeah first of all thank you Edgeman. I think this is a fantastic question and thank you so much for, for raising that and my, my attending the session in the first place I think uh, as I stated I think as an country as a as an overall all multinational or not just multinational as an as in a country where our job market is trending towards becoming more and more more mature in in coming years i think private job sector has seen significant growth in last couple of decades in india the kind of uh, the kind of headcount growth or the talent pool availability mm -hmm. has grown multifold so in, in that sense i think in every organization 
as well as organizations way of dealing the pay philosophy or, or focusing on pay philosophy has matured and now if you if you talk purely because i have in my career only worked in total reward field i feel this is a very important piece if somebody needs an addressing on the comp range aspect and the individual is a is, is a right fit candidate for mm-hmm. a certain role then it's it's highly sort of advisable to have this conversation earlier possible so that uh, the time the individual and the company is investing is 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 basically rightly utilized because if you have this conversation in the very later stage it is basically sort of a loss of effort from both the ends and if mm-hmm. you see organization i think in india market point of view are moving towards this direction the the conversation is becoming more and more candid i know some of european market and us market where the the, the kind yeah. of clarity is is way much uh, broader they they provide you those kind of sense well in advance but indian market because we had our own journey in indian market mm-hmm. the private seen a significant growth and the maturity also comes across in the growth aspect as well so this has been now sort of trending across various organization across the board mm-hmm. so i i believe that that it's always great to ask this question i know there could be somebody who will who could frame it in a nicer way to make it sure that it doesn't sort of uh, so so Offend. see Offend yeah somebody. so i think it's it's more about how you frame it because at the end of the day anybody who are, who is sensible about it understands that it's not the time investment from their end it's from candidates and as well and in this this today's world i think we have to respect everybody's time so so this is the most important piece and earlier it gets addressed easier it becomes for for all of us to to make that each and every conversation is more fruitful than usual okay done thank thanks a lot iman thank you very much and thanks priyan for allowing me to ask the question thank you very much no problem thank you so much jalpa you can unmute and ask your question now sure thank you priyan for having such an interesting session and thank you himang uh, all your inputs are worth of every bit of it himang my question is uh, how do we take the salary negotiation piece during our appraisal cycle followed by one more question is if you are upgrading your skill while on the job how do you use it to negotiate thank you thank you so much for this interesting question i think uh, jalpa this is a very important aspect uh, and and i have seen this kind of conversation happening uh, in my 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 career journey as well when individual acquire new skill set new accreditation or new certification or new maybe a post graduation degree and they try to identify how this is going to impact their com journey or com progression i think one of the key aspect from organization perspective which is very important that as an organization everybody wants to pay for the role pay for the job the individual is performing at times your upgrade or your skill which you have enhanced are right away not applicable for the role you are working on see if somebody is working on a certain role or certain job already in past and they are doing a decent job if the individual upgrade their skills but at the end of the day from organization perspective they are still delivering the old job so comp change in that sense becomes difficult so it becomes very important to connect with your leadership from your business side as well as your hr point of contact maybe hr business partners to get a sense and what kind of different opportunities are available across the company which will do justice to your enhanced skill set and accordingly align your compensation as well so so and and i think i have felt these kind of example in my career as well that the moment you do an upgrade you expect a comp change as well which becomes slightly difficult for an organization to accommodate because from their sense you are still performing the same role which you were doing earlier so it's a combination of acquiring the skill and acquiring the role also which which leverage your newly acquired skill so if you focused on that direction i think it will reflect in your maybe comp appraisal cycle as well or whatever role you are performing 
because comp appraisal cycle is not just individual's performance it is also the organization's performance your division's performance if the the sector itself is not doing well and expecting that your compensation is going to go drastically different is is something which which i think everybody should be aware about that see it's not just how you are performing your role if the sector overall is not doing great like you talk about retail sector during the covid period if entire retail sectors are the performance is going down even though you are doing justice to your job uh, you will not see the impact on your compensation because it's not just based as okay. one factor it's thank you himan for the interesting uh, update as well thank you priya thank you so much uh, jalpa parid you can unmute and ask your question Farid, are you there? Okay, Sail, you can unmute and ask your question. Thanks so much, Priyank. Uh, it's always a pleasure to be on your podcast and listening to various speakers that you bring in. I joined in a couple of minutes back, and Himang, uh, I heard you answering the two questions that were asked by Anshuman and Jalpa. So very useful insights. Uh, coming straight to my question. i think uh during uh, you know appraisal times or year end performance evaluation times we many times notice that uh, people realize that if they get a counter offer or if they get an offer from competition it works in their favor the second thing that i have observed in my career is uh, a lot of people use these offers to increase their value in their existing organization when they have no intent of moving out because they are in a good zone but they just want to ensure that they don't get the standard increment what they're able to negotiate basis what they have on hand and third is many organizations who fall prey to these kind of counter offers create a lot of discontentment with a larger audience uh to keep a few people happy so i wanted to understand himang from you what's your pov what's your point of view uh as your leading compensation for a large brand uh, not associated with your company but just as an individual what is your point of view very very specifically on trying to match counter offers i heard you talk about skill sets accreditation certification that's separate but let's say an individual has counter offers and you want to retain the individual is it worth it at the cost of the larger audience who may not adopt these strategies because of their value system i'll take a pause himang and i would love to hear your thoughts yeah thank you thank you sahil i think this is i think one of the most genuine and, and one of the very interesting challenge which each and every organization sort of navigates through and i think counter offer and counter offer is basically the reflection of how competitive indian job market is because everybody wants to retain their top talent and don't want to let it go as well but what what but what i believe exactly this is see so whenever you have an offer and basis which there is a counter made to you and if you are doing the same kind of role eventually in your career you are going to become an outlier see f- frankly at this point in time because of certain dependency the counter has been made to you and you have been retained but if you don't leverage that opportunity to transition into a role or transition into a position where you are able to justify your compensation as well you will become an outlier to yourself you will become an outlier in the organization internal parity perspective so my core belief is that this will definitely provide you a maybe a decent comp increase in a short term perspective but eventually you will always become an outlier and you will have more pressure to prove your your worth to the organization because the organization is going has taken and what you say extra mile to retain you for a role which is not uh, aligned with your pay now so okay. it becomes very important for you to also make sure that your your uh, presence is also adding that additional contribution got it so priyank if i may just take 30 seconds to clarify what himang said yeah. himang what you're trying to say is 
from a comper ratio standpoint being slightly technical given that we are hr guys on the call you're saying as long as i don't hit 90 percentile on comper ratio i can use this tactic but i should not become an outlier in an existing role for a job family i should transcend myself into a larger role if, if eventually is that what you're saying himang yes. if i've understood you correctly yes super thank you so much thank you himang it was nice listening to you thank you priyank thank you so much sahil uh pallavi you can admit and answer question now pallavi you can answer question okay sakshi you can go next hello priyank so yeah you can answer question Yeah, yeah, you're already working. Yeah, yeah. Hi, Himang. I hope you're doing good. So my question is basically that you know, uh, especially in early age startups, not in corporates, but early age startups, you know, uh, the, in respect to corporates, they are comparatively lower salaries, and we know that. But you know, there are chances of less negotiation in case of startups. So you know, how should you proceed about the same, and you know, what factors you can keep in mind. because you can you know the first uh you know objection would you get is that you know after 3 months or after 6 months it will get increase but for for the starting you can work on a minimum salary or a lower salary so how do you yeah uh, thank you sakshi i think this is a very sort of interesting sort of question as well so to be to be honest i think uh, at the end of the day when a, then there is an organization which is establishing itself which is a startup sort of maybe a, a culture they want to create a value proposition from customers point of view as well and i think at times they are working on a lower budget based on the funding and the flexibility they have and this comes back to the the old point which i have made earlier that every organization has their own so whenever you talk about compensation it's not just based organization is doing how your division is doing so it's become very important to understand the same uh, same parameter while when you work for a startup when there is a stringent budget cutry constraint the, the, that will pretty much reflects on your your total ctc or your uh, your remuneration at that organization but eventually if you are doing good and the organization is doing good you always have equal opportunity to have a multifold growth or a higher exponential com progression growth possibility as well so so because it it's all depends on the kind of the environment you are in the com progression or com journey journey may differ or may 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 take a different course in next sub- subsequent year but the most interesting piece about indian job market is you have a combination of all different type of sectors all different type of organization organization which could be in the nurturing stage and the organization which are very well established already so it's i think from a candidate's point of view from an employee point of view you always have a flexible option to identify a right organization for you if you are not engaged well in the way you have been remunerated at a certain organization but but my my view in a nutshell is that it's a combination of both the aspect if you have constrained initially then you have higher growth prospects also in future oh thanks himang a lot of things got clarified thank you so much thanks priyank so thank you so much sakshi let me invite the last participant for today so nidhi you can unmute and ask your question hi priyank hi himang very good evening to both of you so my question is what are some common mis and how should we add these mistakes i think an organization's view towards 
how they want to go about a role or a job in terms of pay because see there are organization which are ready to give you 100% comp increase looking at their internal parity and the role they expect you to deliver at the organization so it's always great to understand and get more context from the recruiter to get a sense on right pay range for a certain role rather than trying to define it at your end basis the anecdotal information may be available through internet may be available through word of mouth so i think those restriction may take you on the wrong direction i think you i think from a candidate and employee perspective it is always great to have that openness to understand that how what is the the environment where you are landing and what could be the various a uh, comp parameter applied so this is one thing which i think technically from comp perspective is is something which people at time misjudge and the second aspect is see compensation is very important to your job but eventually it's the role which you are going to deal with on day to day basis see your monthly payroll will get processed once a month but next 29 days you will be delivering a work which is which should be aligned with your skill set and your passion otherwise that will become more difficult for you to drive through so at times i have seen people focusing to get a job which is highly paid and they they don't able to gauge the right kind of what do you say value proposition or the the uh, the value they can bring to the organization so they misled themselves to a role which is not engaging for themselves and eventually get uh, get the repercussion of the same i think it's most important that if if you know the right feel for yourself you know your passion and if you, if you work towards it and attain more skills in that specific passion for yourself eventually comp will fall in place so i think these are the two two basic sort of aspect which i will like to highlight i think eventually at the end of the day when you are putting hard work and you are learning and upscaling yourself you will have a more lucrative com progression in coming years and in future context as well uh himang i just want to have one follow up question on this like sometimes the hr is very adamant they really want to know what exactly is in your mind what are your expectations and how to go about it how should you deal with this question this situation see if a certain organization want to have a true sense about your your expectation you can be candid about it because see uh-huh. any expectation will have something which is which is must have and something which is good to have so it, it depends on how so see it's it's all about how you are constructing your feedback across you can you can there could be certain comp aspect where which could be non negotiable for you you can be very candid about it but i feel that eventually as an industry we are progressing towards towards an aspect where we were started paying for roles and we are appreciating the kind of skill set and value an individual is bringing to deliver the role they are performing so industry is moving towards that direction but at at this point in time if you have that kind of a case where stringently somebody is asking for you to share your expectation i don't think there is an harm to it but if you try to have more engaging conversation and identify what are the came compensation range associated and all those aspects i think this will give you more long term understanding about how your com progression or com growth is going to be if you land up in that role so if somebody is stringent you have to tell your expectation i think you don't have much of choice but but i think but i think you always can construct your sort of request and try to gauge more understanding about where they are coming from to make your com journey slightly more more i think in the right direction as per your your expectations thank you himang it actually answered my question thank you thanks priyank thank you both of you have a great evening ahead Thank you so much Nidhi and thank you so much Amang for having a insightful conversation today so before closing the call if you have any final piece of advice you would like to share please go ahead I think uh, it was a good conversation i think some of the questions already made me share what i think should be the top focus area so i think uh, i am always good i and so i i think in that sense i'm good at this point in time so thank you so much Priyank for for providing me this platform it was pleasure talking to you and addressing 
uh, questions based based uh, based on best of my knowledge. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you so much. And the audience, I can see there are so many people are still raising the hand. So please feel free to DM me or Iman. We will be happy to answer all your queries. And final note: please stay tuned for more such episodes in the future. Definitely, you will get more immense knowledge out of it. So thank you so much. Have a great evening.